In the coming videos, we want to unlock some of the power of Python that we've been hiding from you. So it's been there all along, we just haven't discussed it. And this power is wrapped up in something that's known as object-oriented programming. It's often abbreviated OOP. So let's provide a brief introduction to objects in Python. And before getting into that, let's explicitly state our goals for the coming videos. So we want to be comfortable with the following things. One is the concept of objects. Another is that we'll start using a new syntax for calling functions, although we'll start to call those methods when they're associated with objects. And we'll also introduce a new function called the dir function, and we want to see what that is good for. And finally, we want to discuss what's known as operator overloading. And we'll revisit these items when we summarize what we've talked about. But so far in the previous videos, we've talked about data and said that data might be in the form of a integer or float or a string or perhaps some other data type. And we've also talked about functions and shown how we can pass data into a function via the arguments. The functions and the data are decoupled. It's up to us to ensure that we provide the appropriate kind of data or type of data to a function. And what's going to happen with objects is we could more tightly couple the functions and the data, as we'll see. But to provide a bit of context, let's forget about object-oriented programming for a bit and assume we work for a hospital where we want to keep track of patients. And specifically, we want to keep track of a patient's name, their age, and their malady. So let's assume there's a patient named Lady Gaga who comes into our hospital. So we'll assign to the identifier Gaga underscore name Lady Gaga. She has an age of 26. So we'll assign to the identifier Gaga underscore age 26. And her malady, let's say she has a swollen head. Now let's write a function that can display one of our patients. Maybe we'll call this show underscore patient and we pass to this the name, the age, and the malady. We'll print name is equal to and then whatever name we're given. We'll print the string age and then whatever age we're given and then we'll print the string malady and whatever malady we're given. And that's it for the function. So we could say show patient and give an argument of gaga name, gaga age, and gaga malady. And hitting return, we see the name, age, and malady of this patient. But things are kind of spread all over the place. We have a patient, and that's one object in a sense. But we have these three separate identifiers, gaga name, gaga age, gaga malady. And we also have this function that's just designed to show us patients, but it's decoupled from patient objects. Okay, with object-oriented programming, we could more tightly couple all this information together and, in fact, couple this function to the object. And we'll see how to do that in the next video. But before getting to that, I want to mention that the subject of object-oriented programming is very large and, at times, very complicated. We don't want to get bogged down in the details, and we'll just skim the basics. If some of these things don't really resonate with you, that's okay. Don't worry about it. And again, at the end, I'll summarize the things that you should be taking away from these videos.